This steel waterfly is a large caddis adult imitation. Normally tied on a size 6, this variant uses a light wire size 10 dry fly hook with a two extra long body as an extension of the hook shank. Using a dry fly dubbing, this makes her a very buoyant dry fly dropper fly able to support a heavy point fly. Adding additional colorful CDC over the wing provides a little bit more high visibility indicator. In my vise, I have a size 10 to extra fine dry fly hook. I have started my 70 denier black thread about two eyelets behind the eye and wound it back to the bend of the hook. This front section here is going to be where we'll have our thorax. Take a extra small wire. Now I'm using silver. Uh, you can use olive, you can use black. And we're going to mount this on the top of the hook. Bring it underneath. Hold it on top. Make a wrap. And we're going to pull it to length and it's going to stop at that same point. And if it wraps around like mine did, that's okay. Now take a piece of mono that's heavy duty. Now this is a 30 pound, 30 pound test line. Uh, the butt of your leader, if you have some old leaders, will work just as well. And then I don't know if you can see this, I've flattened it out. Now we're going to mount this on the top. Right where our thorax is going to begin. We're going to hold that there. Now that's going to help prop up our wing. And then let's do a half hitch while we fiddle around with uh, reconfiguring our little project here. Now what you want to do is we'll turn this upside down and we're going to turn our hook around. Bring your thread cradle off to the side. Now we're going to bring the wire and the mono over the, the, the cradle which you can't see, it's out of sight right now. And I have a quick little picture on the next slide that'll show you uh, what this will all look like. Put a little weight on your mono. I attach some hackle pliers. And then I do the same thing with my little wire. Have some smaller hackle pliers. So it's easier for me based on the kind of vice I have. If you work on this uh, upside down, you have more room for your bobbin to uh, go around the uh, mono. So we want to wrap this around the hook shank. And we're going to just work our way back. Now we want this body with the extension here to be the same as a size six hook. So here's a size six hook. So the hook shank will come to here and that'll be about a quarter of an inch, uh, five or six millimeters of uh, mono that we want to tie our thread on. So we'll just work our way back. It looks good right there. Then take some super glue and put a little dab of it on there. All right, after that is set, take some olive beaver dubbing, a very small amount. We're gonna make a little rope on our thread and we're gonna dub our body. And when you get right in the bend there, and I ran out, you're gonna to have to make sure you tuck in some dubbing in there.
and then I'll save our work here with a half hitch. Okay, we'll now take our, our uh, wire and we'll wrap this in the opposite direction. And we'll tie that off. And we'll put another half hitch in. And take your scissors, bring it up the hook shank till you just touch it, and then back off a little bit. There we got our extended body. And we'll just flip this around. Take a caddis swing, and I have a link at the end of uh, this video on how to make these caddis fly wings. So I'm gonna take that, it's gonna extend just a little bit past our body. We'll tie that down. At this point in time, you can put on a double wing, which is the CDC feathers for better visibility. Make a couple wraps, bring these back up on top. up underneath and then we'll trim those off. I find a uh, cock hackle and I took this one off a uh, cock neck that was dyed black. Lay that 45 degrees across the top, shiny side facing forward, and tie that in. Take some more of your olive dubbing, and we're gonna dub our thorax. And we'll bring our feather underneath. And we'll lock that guy in. And we'll push everything back with a half inch. And then put a little bit of super glue on there. The Fregonidae family of Trichoptera are huge and contain many species of various colors. After they leave their pupa skin on the surface, they quickly swim across the lake surface to the shore and then take flight. This movement across the surface drives the crowd crazy. What allows this family to reside in lakes is their ability to move water across their gills, and they don't need to rely on movement of water in a stream to give themselves oxygen. Also, with this very buoyant fly, 
you can hang a pupa pattern underneath for a killer combination.